Beneath the blue veil of our planet lies a world so vast, so alien, that even the most advanced instruments humanity has built have only grazed its surface, the ocean, Earth's last true frontier. For centuries, humankind has looked to the stars, dreaming of distant planets and galaxies. But the greatest mystery we will ever face doesn't lie above our heads. It waits beneath our feet, the ocean floor, a silent realm where sunlight has never touched, where the pressure could crush steel, and where evolution has carved life into unrecognizable forms. Every expedition into these depths carries risk. Machines fail, lights vanish, and what returns, if anything returns, often carries more questions than answers. Scientists call it the Hadal Zone, but those who've seen what lies down there call it something else, the void. Today we descend into the uncharted darkness. To uncover why the bravest minds in science now whisper the same unsettling truth. We are not ready to face what sleeps beneath. The journey starts with silence. No waves, no light, no sound, but the creaking of metal as a submersible slips into the black. At just 200 meters, sunlight fades to a ghostly blue. By 1,000 meters, it's gone completely. Beyond that, the world transforms. Temperatures drop near freezing. The pressure increases by one atmosphere every 10 meters, enough to crush a human in seconds. Every move, every breath, becomes calculated survival. And yet, life persists. Creatures that defy biology, eyes that reflect no light, mouths that open wider than their own bodies. It's a realm built on hunger, evolution, and fear. When cameras first captured the deep trenches of the Pacific, scientists expected emptiness, a dead zone of mud and silence. But what they found changed oceanography forever. There were movements, slow, deliberate, intelligent, massive shadows drifting between columns of hydrothermal smoke. Some shapes matched known species, giant squids, six-gill sharks, abyssal fish. Others didn't, unidentifiable, unrecorded, unexplained. And then, the sonar began to scream. The deeper the submersible descended, the more it felt like crossing into another planet. This was not Earth as we know it. No sunlight. No gravity in the human sense. No colors. Only black, silver, and the faint blue pulse of living light. Down here, life doesn't just survive. It adapts into madness. Tiny creatures called ostracods flash brilliant blue sparks in the dark. Not for beauty, but for war. Their light blinds predators long enough to escape. Anglerfish dangle glowing lures to trick prey into swimming straight into jaws lined with needle-like teeth. And the vampire squid, a living fossil from 30 million years ago, spreads its webbed arms into a nightmarish umbrella, an ancient defense evolved in perfect darkness. But these are the known monsters, the ones we've named. What terrifies scientists most are the ones they can't explain. The shadow on the sonar. In 1997, oceanic researchers picked up a signal off the coast of South America, a sound so loud it echoed across 5,000 kilometers of ocean. It was dubbed the bloop. At first, experts assumed it was ice shifting beneath Antarctica. But analysis told another story. Its frequency was organic, alive. Yet to create such a sound, the creature responsible would have to be larger than any known animal on Earth, including the blue whale. No ship, no submarine, no natural phenomenon has ever produced anything close to it. To this day, no one knows what made the bloop. But deep-sea microphones continue to detect similar calls, faint, distant, 
and growing stronger. Life from the Black Smokers Further down, at the bottom of the oceanic trenches, scientists discovered something even stranger, hydrothermal vents. These are cracks in the Earth's crust, their boiling water erupts into freezing darkness. Here, life thrives in complete absence of sunlight, feeding not on plants or light, but on chemicals and heat from the planet itself. Tube worms with no mouths, shrimp that see heat instead of light, colonies of bacteria forming entire ecosystems without oxygen. This was the first evidence that life could exist without the sun. Then suddenly, the impossible seemed real. That life could thrive on distant moons like Europa or Enceladus, hidden beneath layers of ice, feeding on geothermal heat just like this. But that discovery carried another question. If life can exist here, in conditions that defy our understanding, what else could have evolved before we even began to look? The lights beneath the black. Footage from deep ocean ROVs began to reveal flashes of bioluminescence, but not random. Some lights moved in patterns. They appeared, pulsed, and vanished in perfect sequence, like signals. At first, scientists believed it was a coincidence. But then, a research drone off the Mariana Trench recorded a 12-second light pattern repeating every 90 minutes, a geometric rhythm that didn't match any known life form. Some researchers now speculate that certain deep sea organisms might use coded light. Communication evolved through pressure, distance, and darkness. If true, it would mean that beneath the oceans of Earth, a form of collective intelligence could exist. One we cannot see, cannot hear, and cannot reach. And that realization, terrifies scientists more than any monster ever could. There's a point beneath the waves where exploration turns into madness, a depth so extreme that light, sound, and even logic begin to collapse. This is the Hadal Zone, the deepest realm of our planet, a place so hostile that only a handful of humans have ever seen it, and even fewer have come back unchanged. The Descent into the Unknown in 1960, the Trieste became the first submersible to reach the Challenger Deep, the lowest known point of the Mariana Trench, nearly 11 kilometers beneath the surface. When explorers Jacques Picard and Don Walsh reached the bottom, their metal craft groaned under the pressure. Over 8 tons per square inch, the equivalent of 50 jumbo jets pressing on every part of the hull. And yet, something moved. Through the murky window, Picard reported seeing what looked like a flatfish, alive, gliding across the silt. But that shouldn't have been possible. At that depth, every known bone would collapse. Every cell would burst. Slash, no camera was running. No proof exists. Only Picard's shaken voice. We saw life where life should not exist. The things that shouldn't be alive. Decades later, more advanced submersibles returned and what they found made scientists question everything. Translucent creatures that looked like drifting ghosts, worms that thrived on methane instead of oxygen, crustaceans with no eyes, no pigment, and blood that glowed faint blue under infrared. But then came the footage no one could explain. During a 2019 dive, an ROV recorded what appeared to be a massive, gelatinous shape, nearly 30 meters long, drifting silently through the trench. Its movements didn't match any known species or physics of propulsion. It pulsed, almost like it was breathing, and when the camera's lights hit it, it changed color and vanished. The data feed was lost. Seconds later, the company that owned the submersible released a statement blaming a technical malfunction. But the pilot's log still remains classified. The Disappearing Expeditions not every mission to the trench comes back. In 1995, a Japanese probe named Kaiko was sent to explore the Challenger Deep. It transmitted data for years, until suddenly, contact stopped. When another vessel found it months later, it was torn apart. Metal plating twisted like paper, 
and all of its recording systems were missing. Official reports blamed pressure failure. Unofficially, the data feed showed motion moments before it went dark. Since then, deep sea engineers have quietly installed automatic blackout protocols. If certain sonar signatures are detected, all systems shut down. They don't talk about what those signatures are. Only that they've been recorded more than once. The Living Abyss. Some researchers now believe the trenches themselves might be alive, not in a biological sense, but as a vast interconnected ecosystem that behaves like a single organism. FP. Hydrothermal vents act as hearts. FP. Volcanic ridges pulse with magnetic energy like nerves. FP. And the movements of currents resemble neural signals. FP. If that's true, the ocean floor may not just host life. FP. It may be life. A planetary scale creature. Older than we can imagine. Still breathing beneath miles of water and rock. Only a few humans have returned to the trench after Trieste. FP. One of them, filmmaker James Cameron, described it like this. FP. It's not silence down there. It's pressure. It's weight. It's awareness. FP. Awareness. That's the word that stuck with the crew. FP. Because when you reach the bottom, every sensor begins to pick up faint signals, rhythmic pulses, sometimes in patterns, sometimes in replies. FP. As if something in the dark knows you're there. E. Dot. FP.